Amen. Amen, Coach. Amen. Amen. How you guys doing today? Woo! I am glad it is here. Just dealing with things, dealing with things, dealing with things, and having to come before you today. I want to thank, uh, excuse me, I want to thank my first lady because I know she is in pain and dealing with it, um, but I love her to death. She's our spiritual mother of the house, so I give honor to her. Amen. 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 Um, I don't see, but I wanted to do it anyway. Um, I know she normally comes to second service, but I wanted to acknowledge um, Elder Brenda. She had a um, ceremony yesterday on and they identified her as one of the most prominent women in leadership in the IT field. And I just wanted to, she's the second mother of this house, if you will. And I just wanted to, I'll give her praise at the next one too. Um, but let us go into a word of prayer. Thank you, worship team. You always take us there. So thank you, Pastor Steve and team. Praise God. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you to this morning been nervous it's been tough it's been all that father god and i recognize lord god if i don't step behind you right now the people won't get the word that they need to hear this morning so father god i just step back and i allow you to take over in my life lord god that something said today lord god might trigger someone and prick someone's heart lord to allow them to see you in another light. So we thank you today, Father God. And we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. So it, it, it's been a little rough uh, these last few days. And I've known about this for so long. Um, and I do want to tell you, Pastor Gil Gilbert gave me a call this morning. Uh, not a call, a text. And he said, watch out because the choir is going to take you there and, and you, you got to pace yourself now because if you, if you get too far out in front of you, you won't have nothing left for second service. But I plan on doing what the Lord has called me to do. We're going to be in Jeremiah today. My sister Karen, I don't see her, but she had us in Ezekiel a while back, um, a couple of weeks ago. But I want to go to the book of Jeremiah, and, and, and the reason I want to go to Jeremiah is because of some of my own personal things that I've been dealing with in my own life. And so Jeremiah was somebody that when we read the text, and we're going to read 1 verses 4 through 10, that God said he knew him before he was ever conceived. And I, and I had to start thinking about that because as I've been walking in my life, this past year has been trying, to say the least. Has some financial things that happened in my life that, that, that took the winds out of my sail. And they put me in a space where I began to just... Uh, not really know if God was there with me because I, I prayed about what I was going to do and, and I thought I sought out my wife, which I never do. And I thought I did all the things that God was asking me to do before I jumped into this financial investment. And then I jumped into it. And a year and a half or two years later in jumping into it, taking money and moving money out of 401ks to be able to handle this investment. Lost everything. Lost everything. And so I had been down, depressed, not always understanding how the next day would go. And so that was right about the time that, that I was coming out a little bit. Pastor Felix said, hey, man, I, I need you to preach. 
on this certain day. So it allowed me to get out of my own feelings because that's where I was. I was in my own feelings. And I wasn't seeing God clearly in my life. Even though I, I would go to work, I would come here on Wednesday night, I'd be in that parking lot greeting you. Things was going on on the inside that I couldn't explain. And it was that feeling of depression. And I know it was depression because I'm a depression eater. And, I, and I've come on this stage several times and shared my, my issues with my weight going up and down and fluctuating. But I know for a fact that when I'm stressed, when everybody goes to bed, that refrigerator door opens and closes. Y'all know what that's about? It ain't just me then, huh? Just open. That's how I deal with things without trying to show people what's going on. And so God took me to Jeremiah. So I want to look to Jeremiah and look at him as a man. Because I think there's some parallels. And, 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 and let, me, let me jump back a half a second. When I preach, I'm really not preaching to y'all. I'm really not. Because he's been whooping me for the last two months, me, to get myself out of where I am. So I'm hoping something that he whooped me on, he can prick your heart on. Amen? Amen. Let's read Jeremiah verse, uh, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Amen. The word of the Lord came to me saying, and this is an autobiography. Jeremiah wrote this. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as the prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, don't say that. I am too young. You must go to every one I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appointed you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Jeremiah, when you go and look throughout this scripture, it's telling and it's interesting. He was a PK kid for the first thing. His father was a priest, so he was an ancient PK. He was less than 20 years old when the word of the Lord came to him. And that's like a lot of the great greats out there in the Bible. They were young, so I want to take time for my millennials and my Gen X and Gen Zs. God could use you right where you are because he will put his words in your mouth. So for those of you that struggle with, I don't know enough, that's what Jeremiah's struggle was. I don't know enough, but God reassured him. I'm going to be right there and I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Jeremiah preached for almost five, 50 de or five decades, almost 50 years. The commentators say between 42 and 47 years, Jeremiah went out to the people and he preached salvation, repentance. Guys, turn it around. There's judgment coming on you. And he did this day after day for 50 years. And I had to go and see what that man 
was doing because they, it says, you read it, we read it. He was called out. God set him apart. So where did he get the fortitude to every day go out and talk to the people of Judah about turning their lives around? Jeremiah was one of the only prophets. Look at uh, chapter 16, verse 2. I'm not going there, but you guys can read that. Told him not to get married. He was the only, one of the only prophets that was told, don't marry and have a family. So he was lonely. He didn't have anybody to go home to after he went out and preached that word. He was lonely. There's even times in the Bible, and it's interesting to me, because I was at the same place. He said, Lord, why was I even born? This is the major prophet. And this is what I was looking at in my own life. What, why, I didn't go why you were born, but I was like, what is my purpose in this walk? I've experienced failure. I've experienced loss in my life. When am I going to get a win, Lord? And I'm sure those are the same sentiments Jeremiah had. When am I going to get a win, Lord? And it said for five decades, he went out and preached and preached. And I want you guys to put yourself in his shoes. For almost 50 years, five kings, nobody ever came down the aisle and repented. 42 to 47 years, five kings, nobody ever came down and said, I want to repent. And that's crazy to me. What kind of, what, what was going on in Jeremiah? We see his emotion. We see everything that was happening to him. He cursed the people. The people were almost like Sodom and Gomorrah. Kind of like we are today. Men and men running down to the whorehouse, it says it in the word. Just all kind of rampant stuff going on in that nation. And every day he showed up. He showed up. And that's what God was getting over to me. He didn't say everything was going to be peachy keen. But what he promised was he'd be there with me throughout. And that's what he showed Jeremiah. And that's what he began to show me. That that's how that thing is. His ministry was to uproot and to tear down and to destroy and to overthrow. Four out of those six verbs, all negative. That's what his ministry was going to be about. So for almost 50 years, he came to work. He preached. He tried to pull people out of their seats to get up and respond to the inevitable word of God that he would be passing judgment on them. And nobody responded. So I looked at, I just want to illustrate because the core, the core message I want to give to you today before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were here, before you were born, before you came to this planet, I set you apart. So I, I have a one point sermon today. Because that's what I wanted to know. So God allowed me to get an example while I was studying to kind of show me how this thing works. So God is the creator of all. We in agreement with that. And if you think of a, a illustration of a manufacturer, they create things. So I, I, I want to put that parallel there. Everything you have 
has a name on it. Your car has a name on it. Your purse has a name on it. Your shoes has a name on it. Your phone, this iPad, has a name on it. And that name for this iPad and this phone has a symbol. And it has an apple on it. Mercedes has a Mercedes symbol on it. And when it's finished in the manufacturing plant, they put their name on it. And that signifies it's finished after they put their name on it. So when we look at this thing, they have to test this phone. They got to test it. So in essence, when they're testing the phone, when you go to the store and buy it in this box, effectively, you're really not buying something that's new. Okay, y'all ain't with me yet. In the manufacturing plant, This goes down the assembly line. They put everything they need in it. And after it comes off the assembly line, they test it. And then they put their name on it. So you get a box. You open that box. And there's this, there's this manual in the box. And in the manual in the box, it has a whole bunch of promises in the manual. And because they have promises in the manual, you can figure out how the phone work. So one of the promises is, is that the phone can receive phone calls. You know why? Because it was tested. And in the manual to tell you, it can uh, send out text messages. You know why? Because it was tested. It'll tell you that the battery has an 8 to 10 hour lifespan. Do you know how they know? Because they tested it. And because they tested it, when you get it, it's already finished when you get it. Now, this product, oops, I didn't lost. That's, that's not the real manual, y'all. I had to fold this up when I got here. But this product here, on the last couple of pages of it, it has what they call a guarantee and a warranty. And when the warranty, it says to us, we back this product up with our company. And if anything ever goes wrong with the product, we will repair it at our cost. We will get it from you. When you ship it, it'll be at our cost. When we bring it back, we're either going to find out how to repair it or we're going to give you a new one. Now, why would they do that? They don't know you. They don't know me. So why would they do that? Because they protecting their namesake. They're protecting their reputation. It doesn't have anything to do with us. 
the company, the manufacturer, the creator is protecting his product and his reputation. So he's going to get it. Okay, okay. Sometimes they will recall a product. In 2000, I think 13, my car, I got a, 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 a letter in the mail that, from Saturn, and Saturn said, if you purchase your car in this time frame, we want you to bring this car because it has a problem with it, and we want, to bring, want you to bring it in back to the plant, and at our expense, we will take care of it for you. That was the guarantee. And so what I begin understanding through this as I'm dissecting Jeremiah's life to help me is that success of the product is good for the creator of the product, for the manufacturer of the product. So... When Jehovah Jireh International came around, huh? And he created a product called man. He created a product called man. And see, when he created that product, he had already tested it. He had already tested it. So when Jeremiah said, Lord, I'm too young, he said, no, be quiet, because you've already been tested. When he got depressed, and he was, Lord, the Lord wasn't surprised at him being test, uh, depressed, because he had already tested him. He wasn't surprised by my own financial failures because he knew I would get through because I have already been tested. You gonna get through what you gotta get through because the creator has already tested you. Mm. Now, in that manual, I'm going back to it. Y'all remember, does anybody still got a VCR in here? Maybe a DVD? Huh? Now, y'all be honest with me. Be honest with me. Your smart TV, your iPhone, your uh, iPad, all of that. Did you ever read the entire manual? For your new refrigerator, did you read the? For that VCR that you bought 20 years ago, did you read them? So what did you learn how to do? Turn it on, play, record, and turn it off. Turn it on, play, record, and turn it off. And we don't understand why the light is still blinking. The VCR has about 50 functions. We learn four. And it's kind of like our life. Huh? Get up. Go to work. Come home. Eat. And go to sleep. Get up. Work. Eat. And sleep. We play this game called cash flow, and it's, it's, it's about getting out of the right race. And, and, and that's what we do. We know the four functions from the warranty. It has 50. And we wonder why the VCR is living below its capabilities. Oh, oh, y'all know what I'm talking about? See, there's a manual 
there's a manual, see, and it has some promises in it. It has some promises in it for you, and it has some promises in it for me. But because we haven't read the manual for our lives, we don't know what those promises are. So we can't walk like we need to walk. We don't understand that, yes, we're going to go through some up and downs in life. But the book will show you what he does about it. That he'll keep walking with you and talking with you to make sure that you get back on course and back on track. RCF. When this iPad was purchased, it had everything in it. It came to you finished. When you came on the scene, you came finished. The creator put everything that you needed inside of you. And you came finished. But what happens is, is that we allow culture. We allow going to that job every single day. Become a place where we begin to take our eyes off of God. And we go through the motions. Even when we sit in these pews. We get up, we leave, and we repeat the cycle. And we don't pick up the manual to understand what's going on and what we truly can be about in this life. Eddie, bring up, uh, if you could, um, I missed some slides, so we okay. The principles, if you just bring up the principle slide for me. Amen. Where purpose is not known, abuse is almost certain. When you don't know who you are and you don't know why he has you here, you will abuse your gift. You will use it for things that God didn't intend you to use it for. You may be successful, but are we really successful? Not every purpose is known. But because it's not known doesn't mean it doesn't have a purpose. We got to read the manual. If you want to know the purpose of a thing, don't ask the thing. Huh? This is what Proverbs 19 and 21 says. Many are the plans in the mind of a man. But it's the purpose of the Lord that will stand. See, we get together. I'm lost. You lost. How are we going to get to our destination? <laughs> the purpose of a thing is the only found in the mind of the creator. What am I advocating for this morning? We got to get in the book. We got to get in the book. In that box came a few accessories. And they got a plug that you got to plug so you can make sure you get that battery fill. So there's some accessories that we got to accessorize with. Sometimes we got to get that little protector that goes over the screen because it falls in life. And we don't want to crack the shield. Some of us, like I did with my iPhone, have lost the manual. And we call customer service all the time. Support. And sometimes I feel that's what we do in here. This is the only time we get the word of God. 
and it ends up being not effective because you're not using all the promises that he gave you. You were born with it. Let me take you here real quick. Eddie, go ahead and put up, um, let me show you what kind of God we got. Put up that next slide. If you can't read it, I'll read it. You don't need to go to it. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. Now, he about to say this twice. When God says things twice, key in on what he's saying. I am God and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient time things not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish my purposes. All my purposes. See, God puts the finish in everything that he does. And then he takes the finish and puts it in the start. So he's here. Everything comes complete. And if I can moonwalk, I'd moonwalk on back. Then you start. God has finished it. He needs some faith walkers. Some people that's going to read their manual and understand that we're going to go through life's ups and downs. But he's already finished it. So if he gave it to you to do, God put the do in it for you to be able to complete what you do. See, let me bring it all home a little bit. This place right here, it wasn't finished when we got here. So he brought a little group of people and put them in a white tent in the uh, parking place. And every day we got in that white tent and we praised God and we broke down and we praised God and we broke down every single Sunday. Not understanding this was already complete. God finishes everything. Then he takes the finish and puts it in the start. And then he needs a few people that will just believe him. See, there's a vacant piece of land over there. And see, I don't know that we understand this. And, and, and I'm going to back up just a minute and I'm going to be done because we're close. I finally began to understand why Jesus says suffer the little children. At least one of the reasons I think he said it. Because as we become adults, we stop dreaming. And one of the ways you're going to get to the kingdom of heaven and be like one of these little ones is that you got to get your dreams back. God put dreams in us when we came out of the womb, there's research on it, that babies dream. And what happens is life begins to happen. And their own parents will say, boy, you can't do that, girl. You're not going to be that. And knocks the dreams that God has put in them to finish. And that's what we do as a people. We don't believe that he's a finisher. Here's the last one. Put that up for me. Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are God's own handiwork. And this is the amplified. His workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus. We were born anew. That we may do these good works which God predestined planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time. That we should walk in them, living the what? Which, the pre, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. John Piper says it this way. The foundation of God's love for us is in his commitment 
to his own glory. The creator is not going to allow you to fail if you're going after what he wants you to go after. He's committed to your success. He's committed to my success. And as long as he's committed to it, because he's the one that got us before time started. Read Psalms 139 when you get an opportunity. And he'll tell you about how he wrote things in his book before you were born. Before you were born. Before the sperm hit the egg. He wrote things about what you're going to accomplish in his book. But you got to believe it. May we stand. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for the opportunity to share. I thank you, Lord God, for the revelation that you provided to me. That if we just understand and trust you, that you gave us everything that we need, Father God. You didn't leave anything out. And you wanted us to have the good life. That doesn't mean it doesn't come without some ups and downs and some bumps and bruises. But Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you would walk it out with us every single day. We bless you today, Lord God. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand.